So hi guys and welcome back. As you know I got a 3D printer recently and after dialing it in time was ripe for my first RC oriented printing project. As you know I'm fascinated by these small brushed quadcopter toys and especially by modifying them for FPV. So this time I decided that I wanted to build one of these myself. So I started by first getting a very nice looking frame from Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is a platform where you can get for free, mostly for free, uh, models which you can print on your 3D printer. It looked very lightweight but still robust and there were even some more suggestion, suggestions for components. So this is great. So I ordered all of the suggested components and once I had them I started by printing the frame. I first previewed everything in Simplify 3D, which is my favorite slicer. The slicer for 3D printing is a component, a software component, which prepares your 3D model for 3D printing and can have a real impact on the print quality. I originally used one of the free slicing programs, but after I got Simplify 3D, I never looked back, so there was really a difference in quality. Before you start to print, you can get a great preview of every print move which you see right now, and once you are satisfied, you can start printing it. And so, the frame which I used for this project, and also my first ever self-printed frame, came into existence. So here I can only say again how much I enjoy this printer. As you know it was only 239 bucks so it was really cheap and for that it's performing, uh, well at least for me, flawlessly. So well it works great so if you ever thought about getting into 3D printing I can still really suggest this printer. So if you like take a look at my um, intro of this printer which I did recently and well maybe that would be something for you as well. But now well let's fast forward to the finished product so that you can see what the frame actually looks like. Here you can see the result. It's, it's just such a great feeling to have something on your computer and just a little bit later you have it in hands. So that is like future you know <laughs> for me. It's, it's awesome. So that is really awesome about 3D printing. But now let's get the building. Here you can already see the completed quadcopter, only missing the upper shell which you saw in the time-lapse build video. And this is a great time to talk about what makes quadcopters with brushed motors special. First, they are cheap. The completed quadcopter, as you can see it here, only cost me around 45 bucks, around 45 US dollars. So they are also very lightweight, since they only need a one cell LiPo, a 1S LiPo to run. The reason for this is that the brushed motors have, compared to their brushless uh, brothers, a very high KV. So the ones I use here have a KV of 16,000. So that means they can produce sufficient thrust of only a single cell LiPo. So that is awesome. Another really nice thing about these brushed quadcopters is that the flight controller, which you see here in the middle, also has an integrated receiver a DSM2 receiver and additionally it also has the brushed ESCs already on board. So this makes wiring very easy as you can see here and very straightforward. And finally, which is just awesome, this flight controller runs clean flight. So yes, you can have your rate, your acro mode, your angle mode, everything. It just runs a standard version of clean flight and this is just awesome. So some more words on the build itself here. The motors which you see here are just stuck in and they hold great that way. Also the props are simply stuck onto the motor shafts which also holds very well. So I have had many flights already and never had a problem with, with a prop coming loose or something like that. So that works great. 
Uh, the flight controller itself is also simply hold by double-sided tape here. So basically all you have to do is to solder the motor connections which use a standard clean flight layout for the motor layout and the power connector and you're basically done. So this is this is really awesome. The flight controller already comes pre-flashed with clean flight and I mostly kept the, its configuration which is pretty much standard apart from some very small changes which I want to go through with you now. So as I said that's your standard clean flight which we are connecting to right now and this is your standard clean flight layout. So there's really nothing special here in the setup. Uh, just calibrate your accelerometer and you're done. And as you can see, yeah, it, it reacts very nicely. So that's just your standard clean flight. Nothing to do for the boards, just left them as they are. And well, for the configuration, uh, you can see, well, it's a quad X. It ha doesn't have one shot activated. I think that's not relevant for the brushed motors. I left it that way. Uh, if you need, you can align your board and sensors, but I hadn't, didn't need to do this. What I did need to do is to uh, change the accelerometer trim a bit uh, because it was slightly off for me and it wouldn't calibrate nicely. So that's the only thing. As you can see, battery voltage VPAT is activated, but I don't use it. And well, RX serial needs to be selected for the onboard receiver. This is standard setting, so you can just leave it. I didn't change anything for fail safe. I also didn't change anything for the bit tuning, but I will in the future. So you can just change your bits as you would do for a brushless quadcopter, and I will definitely, definitely play with this in the future. So this is nice. Maybe try the Lux float. Ah, uh, we will see. So this is really nice. For the receiver, all I changed was the channel map, since I'm flying mode 4 with that. If you're a standard mode 2 flyer or something like that, you can just leave it as it is. So all the other settings I just left as they are, as they can pre-configured with that. For the modes, this is just how I left it. So they're, uh, they're already configured uh, to have angle mode on a switch. So I will definitely play with that in the future to also try acro mode and so on. This should be fun. For the other things, for the adjustment, I didn't do anything. I just left this also for the servos, for the GPS. There was nothing to do. There was also nothing to do for the motors, but there is a certain parameter which we need to set, which we go a straight do now because for the other part I didn't need to do anything and this parameter is actually the, the, the motor BVM timing. So this this uh, motor BVM timing uh, which you can see here I'm just reading it the motor BVM rate it is so this tells clean flight if it's a brushless motor or a brushed motor. It tells it some more, but this is basically what it tells it. If you have a setting of, of more than 500 here, clean flight treats it as brushed motors, which is what we want. And I simply googled uh, the motor which I used and they told me that I should use 16,000 for these motors. So this is what I did. So this is basically the only uh, thing which I changed here. Uh, simply by, by putting the, the set uh, motor PVM rate comment to 16,000 because originally when I got this flight controller it was set at 4,000. Set it to 16,000, type in save, reboot and you're done. And basically that's it. Arriving at a takeoff weight of, of only 35 grams, including the 1S 300mA LiPo, I was ready to try a first maiden flight. <laughs> Using only the lower plate, which you can see, and without any FPV equipment so far. So, enjoy the maiden flight. So while we are watching the really fun uh, maiden flight, one thing on the radio here. Uh, as most of you you know, I'm using a Tyrannis, which of course does not speak DSM-2. So what I uh, got was my, I got myself one of these cheap Orange RX modules for the Tyrannis. All the infos will be in the description, of course. This Orange RX module uh, works great with this flight with this flight controller, and let me or bind it uh, easily. There are some 
um, preferred modules out there, uh, also some uh, modules which people build their own, which supposedly work even better also with, with other uh, 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 existing toy copters, but for this project the Orange RX module worked just fine. So that works great, the maiden flight was awesome. <laughs> I really liked it, much better than expected actually. So my logical next step was to put FPV on it of course. Here I could have easily used one of my own micro FPV sets, which I presented in one of my previous videos, but instead I wanted to try out one of the new Quanum Elite micro FPV sets. These come with a 25mm 40 channels push button uh, uh, video transmitter already integrated, which makes them awesome for these micro quadcopters. They are also only 4.5 grams, so this is great and already come with a clever leaf antenna. So I opted for that. And as you can see, it was very easy to set up. I simply connected it to the power pads of the flight controller and basically I was done. Mm, note that this also means that the unfiltered, very noisy, thanks to the brushed motors, power goes straight into this micro FPV set, which is also a great test to see if it does power filtering and if yes, how well it works. So now it's time for the FPV Maiden. And off we go. <laughs> so as you can see, that actually works great. The Quanum Micro FPV set does a great job at power filtering. I could almost see no interferences uh, whatsoever. So and, and 25 milliwatts are also more than enough for these micro quadcopters. So that, that's really awesome. That thing is running great and had. I had tons of fun with it already, flying it in my garden. I'm getting around 3 minutes of flight time with the really cheap components which I used, which is awesome. I will definitely continue along this path and I have already ordered some quality components by Micro Motor Warehouse. I have them already incoming for my next build. So I'm really, really uh, looking forward to that. So while you enjoy my FPV maiden, I guess this concludes this video. Uh, all the links are in the description, so take a look. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and please subscribe. If you have any comments, please ask them below, as you know I try to answer all of them. Hope you liked it and I'm really looking forward to see you next time.